I call this museum the best kept secret in northwestern Minnesota. It's about 16 miles north of Thief River Falls. And when you get on the little road heading towards Viking, look for a sign about two feet off the ground on a telephone pole. Otherwise, you're going to miss it. I did four times. We had a family reunion in Viking one day, and after the reunion, I kind of wandered around the small town, and I spotted this tractor sitting on a pole. So I went over to see what was going on, and to my surprise, this is the best little museum I've ever seen. Peter's Museum in Viking, Minnesota. Well, underneath the tractor on the pole were several tractors, and it gave me some kind of idea of what to expect when I went inside the building. There's actually two or three buildings to go inside besides the log house. When I opened, door and opened the door and walked in, well, this is what I saw. And everything you can think of that was on the farm back in the 40s and 30s and 50s are in these buildings. Slowly walk through, take a look at yesterday, and you can even touch. Remember the hand crank telephone? Well, and the party line? And rubbernecking? If you do, then you're as old as I am. This is, uh, we're in downtown Viking, Minnesota. The, Where's Viking reference to Thief River Falls? Grand it's uh, 16 miles north of Thief River Falls and 17 or 18 miles from Warren, Minnesota, 82 or 80 some miles from the Canadian border. What do we have here? I see a lot of old tractors. Well, we started our own museum here. We were in the cities and we moved up here so we figured we had to get rid of all of our stuff that we had in the cities so we built this building and we were just going to shove stuff in there and then we decided to kind of make it respectable and so you could see things and one thing led to another and we made our own little museum here in Viking Minnesota and people come to see it and they can't hardly believe all the different things we have in there it's if there's, there's many things that people have never seen before. Describe some of the things in one of the buildings, all the tractors and the cars or whatever. I have, uh, I have like hands-on kind of things. I have a corn grinder where you can put a cob of corn in and grind it and, uh, or shell it and grind it for the kids and things like that. I have a tractor on a pole. It's about 14 feet, 15 feet in the air. You can have your picture taken on it. I'll take the picture if you climb up.
and I have a a row of Burma Shave signs. When I was a kid, they had these signs every mile or so on the road, and they'd tell a story, uh, and then at the end there'd be a Burma Shave advertisement sign. It'd, like a, a, a miss, a man, he kissed the miss and missed the curve Burma Shave or something like that. <laughs> I can't really remember. The signs. Yeah, they were in, uh, I got the I signs. Got the signs. I found the signs at an auction sale in Wisconsin, I believe it is. They were all in cement. I had to dig them up and bring them here and put them back in the ground. They're close together now, so you don't have to go a mile in between. Describe what we're looking at behind you here, this building. And this building behind me is a log cabin I made. My brother and I helped, or my brother helped me. And uh, we had the logs cut in Red Lake Falls, a sawmill guy cut them for me and we put them together and put the roof on and the slabs here and now it's uh, inside it's like pioneer days it's a butter churn and old table and all old uh, furniture and things like that. And I have in the other building over here I have a gas station, it's a drive through gas station. When I was a kid here in Viking, we had a drive through one and we used to spend a lot of time here. All the teenage boys would go there and work on their cars and fool around and drink pop and talk smart. And so I'm trying to relive my youth. I built it just like that. It's got all the stuff in and the tire changer and the gas pumps. And, and in the back I have old uh, hit or miss motors and a blacksmith shop. and. Behind that I have a windmill that actually pumps water and a pond and uh, that's in front of the museum and I have a big tractor on a pole and just uh, more things than you can see in a short period of time. So this is a gas pump from like the 1890s, 1900s or so and this covers up the workings of the gas pump when we pull it down. Here's the gauge where it tells you how many gallons the line would be up there where the gas would come out and it would put it in your car and then you would crank it here and then this would tell you how many gallons you would be putting in your car and that's how many you would pay for. And way uh, earlier this is where they used to come out and wash your windshield and stuff. This is where they'd have their rags and their chamois and they'd clean it off and run out to your car and say, can I help you sir? They don't do that much anymore. No, they don't. <laughs> What's the red big can next to it? And this is an oil dispenser. You'd put bulk oil in here, and then this would open up, and you'd crank your crank, and then you could fill your bottle of oil up of 30 weight, 40, 10, whatever, and put that in your car. This was before they had cans and bottles. They put it in glass bottles with a spigot on it. And up here we have uh, glass jars. This is how they used to dispense the oil. It has the Spigot on the top, and each one of these containers would have different kinds of oil in, like 10 weight, 30 weight, transmission oil, whatever. And this is where they'd put the oil in, and this would be how much they had in there. You could measure it. And then you'd take your jar down, and you'd put your spigot down, and turn this on, and then that would fill up the jars, and then you could have it ready to put in your cars. This is a steam engine. It was handmade by a steam engine fellow from the southern Minnesota about oh, 30 years ago maybe. And uh, it does run on steam if you want it to. You have to add a few more pipes and things. But right now it's uh, made to run on air, compressed air. I can hook up a line to it and it'll sound and look just like a regular steam engine. It goes forward and reverse and you can only go as far as your air line is though. And every little thing is made. He had to really engine, be an engineer and knew how to how things worked. And he even welded all the little things on the wheel there. And it's quite the accomplishment, I think. And if you're in the Thief River area or any surrounding areas where biking isn't too far from any too major of a town and 
I'm usually here all the time and uh, I'm either at the Viking Cafe or here at the museum. You can come in, the price is free and you can look all you want. It's, uh, and if there isn't something in there that you've never seen before, you don't have to pay.